Welcome to the Confined Animal Facilities, or CAF, program workshop session as part of the Regulatory Alignment Study. Crow will be hosting two workshop sessions related to the CAF program. This recording will share information on the study's CAF program regulatory pathways or proposals as outlined in the Regulatory Alignment concept paper released in early May. It will not include any information shared during the live workshop sessions. For the session, we will be covering the following agenda items. First, we will go over an update on the regulatory alignment study, provide an overview of the objectives and upcoming milestones. Then, we will cover the workshop session objectives and share our approach for regulatory alignment and the development of the regulatory alignment concept paper. For most of the workshop session, we will present an overview of each of the proposed regulatory pathways or RPs as divided up by the following four focus areas data and information sharing, efficiencies, effectiveness, and equity. We'll end the session with a wrap up and next steps. If you aren't familiar with the study, the Regulatory Alignment Study is a three year long engagement with the goal to identify opportunities for regulatory alignment and streamlining processes within the areas of food safety and water quality. At the onset of the study in November, 2022, Crow was tasked with five key objectives which align with our key study milestones or tasks. The first being to evaluate regulatory requirements, then to conduct listening sessions with members of the agricultural community. We completed both of these tasks and we'll explain each in more detail in a coming slide. Our next objectives are to convene the agricultural community and regulators, which we will be completing through these workshops, to identify and prepare implementation plans, and finally to provide recommendations for technological enhancements, if any. As mentioned in the previous slide, we will be conducting these workshops as part of our third study objective. The workshops will be instrumental in shaping our final recommendations and remaining study milestones, which you can see highlighted in the three boxes on the slide. To provide a brief overview of each, in summer 2024, along with these workshops, Crow will be identifying process improvements and implementation steps to support regulatory alignment. In fall of 2024, we will be evaluating and recommending technological enhancements as they relate to our proposals. And finally, by November 2025, we will present solutions and recommend implementation plans, which will inc include release of a final report. In terms of the workshop session, we have laid out five key objectives for these workshops. The first is around effectiveness of proposals and understanding whether the proposals meet the regulatory alignment goals. The second is around implementation challenges and opportunities. Any specific examples you can provide around this would be helpful to our team in understanding the feasibility of proposals from various perspectives. The third is on unaddressed needs or gaps. This includes areas not currently addressed in the proposals, while keeping in mind the overall scope of the study, which is confined to the four program areas of the Irrigated Lands Regulatory Program, the Produce Safety Program, the Confined Animal Facilities Program, and the State Winery Order. Objective four is on equity and inclusivity and how the proposals may impact different groups within the agricultural community, including small scale and socially disadvantaged growers and communities. Finally, we look forward to hearing any suggestions for improvements of the proposals to better meet your needs. We released the regulatory alignment concept paper in early May. The paper is available on the study's website and includes our initial proposals or regulatory pathways for streamlining. The paper covers four programs in scope of the study, including the Produce Safety Program, the Irrigated Lands Regulatory Program, the Confined Animal Facilities Program, and the State Winery Order. We encourage everyone to read the concept paper and or executive summary, which are available on the study's website as they have more details on the proposals we will be covering in the workshops. The development of the paper and the proposals detailed in the paper were based on information and input gathered throughout our study's first two tasks, which included evaluating the regulatory requirements and conducting listening sessions with members of the agricultural community. During these tasks, Pro conducted nearly 30 sessions with CDFA and Water Board staff and mapped 80 distinct processes across the programs and scope of the study. Additionally, Crow held over 70 listening sessions with members of the agricultural community 
to hear their input and experiences with the state's food safety and water quality programs and regulatory requirements. As mentioned in the previous slide, our approach for regulatory alignment and development of initial proposals was based on extensive research and outreach conducted throughout the study. In considering what regulatory alignment means, we identified three different goals, which were validated and reinforced by input we received from program staff and agricultural community members. The goals are to, one, empower the agricultural community through streamlined regulatory requirements, two, support the state's data and information collection efforts, and three, strengthen protections to human health and the environment. We used these three goals to help develop proposals that are both balanced across various perspectives and benefits and grounded in current, the current regulatory landscape. We also identified four focus areas that form the foundation of the proposals. They are crucial for realizing the regulatory alignment goals. The focus areas include one, data and information sharing, two, efficiencies, three, effectiveness, and four, equity. We will explain each of these in the next slide. The focus areas provide a lens for how we organize the proposed regulatory pathways in each program. The first is data and information sharing, which describes opportunities to improve the exchange of selected data and information between state regulatory agencies and programs. The second is efficiencies, which describes opportunities to simplify and expedite regulatory, administrative, reporting, and compliance processes. The third area is on program effectiveness, or opportunities to measure regulatory performance objectives and goals. And finally, the last focus area is on equity, which describes opportunities to ensure the inclusion of socially disadvantaged communities, farmers and ranchers, in the development, implementation, and enforcement of regulations. Within each, each of these focus areas, we have, have identified initial proposals or regulatory pathways to improve, streamline, and align regulatory programs and requirements in scope of the study. As we walk through the following regulatory pathways, please keep in mind the following discussion questions. First, what are potential implementation benefits or opportunities? What are potential implementation challenges? Which regulatory pathway within each focus area is most important to you? And finally, are there any unaddressed needs? We would appreciate your feedback on these questions as they will help Crow to continue to refine and develop the proposals. As mentioned, you can provide your feedback during the live workshop sessions or through written feedback by sending an email to regulatoryalignmentstudy at crow.com. Crow has identified 10 regulatory pathways, or RPs for short, for the Confined Animal Facilities Program. Two of the RPs are related to data and information sharing. Two of the RPs are related to program efficiency. Two of them are related to program effectiveness and four of the RPs are related to equity. Please keep in mind that these RPs are considerations, options, tools, and or recommendations for improving, streamlining, and aligning the regulatory programs and requirements and scope of the study. However, they are not final recommendations, but rather a starting point for additional conversation. Now we will be diving into our regulatory pathway options. RPs one and two, are related to data and information sharing, or opportunities to enhance the sharing of specific data and information between state agencies. We will be going through each RP and their RP opportunities in more detail throughout the discussion. The format of these slides is as follows. The first box shows the RP title, while the second box displays the RP's opportunities which describes specific ways to implement or achieve the RPs. As mentioned earlier, RP1 aims to enhance data and information sharing by standardizing reporting requirements and templates across regional water boards. At present, each of the different water boards regions collects information from its members differently. Standardizing this information collection process makes things simpler for both regulators and the regulated community. RP opportunities include generating standardized general information forms to streamline reporting processes, building on existing electronic self-monitoring processes to standardize implementation across all regional water boards to the extent feasible, 
and providing additional guidance and instructions on requested data fields within standardized templates to support collection of high quality data while considering regional and or facility type differences. Regulatory pathway number two. RP number two aims to enhance data and information sharing by centralizing data management systems. Currently, there are many different databases being used by state agencies, monitoring groups, and laboratories. By consolidating to a single database system, the need to learn and use different systems is eliminated. Opportunities include expanding application programming interfaces or APIs for interaction between existing databases, or to elevate GeoTracker to a centralized database and enhance its capabilities. For more information, Database APIs facilitate interaction between two databases by acting as intermediaries that enable data exchange and synchronization. By using database APIs, an application can connect to multiple databases, execute queries, and transfer data between them. For example, an application can use an API to connect to two different waterboard databases simultaneously. It can then retrieve data from one database, process it, and insert it or update it in the second database. This approach can be used for tasks such as data migration, real-time data synchronization, and integrating disparate systems. Now we're going to be moving into the efficiencies section of our RPs. We have identified two uh, RPs in the efficiencies category. RP number three is expanding third-party monitoring group responsibilities to streamline monitoring, reporting, and inspection activities. And RP number four is to invest in resources that support improved management of excess nutrients. RP number three aims to increase program efficiency by expanding third-party monitoring group responsibilities. In comparing the CAF program with the Irrigated Lands program, it's become obvious that ILRP third-party groups are more involved in the regulatory processes than CAF monitoring groups. There is an opportunity there for expanding the responsibilities of CAF monitoring groups. RP opportunities include providing opportunities for third-party groups to conduct alternative pre-inspections to encourage compliance and reduce water boards and staff workload, empowering third-party groups to provide reporting templates and regulatory assistance to dischargers, and to expand third-party group responsibilities to assist in annual reporting processes. A potential benefit to the first proposal opportunity is that this approach would allow the independent inspectors to conduct inspections on CAF facilities. While this does not replace a CAF program inspection by water boards, these independent inspections could help with the prioritization of water boards' inspection list so that facilities that recently passed an inspection by a third party group are a lower priority for CAF program staff. By integrating third party assistance into the regulatory framework, water boards could have more time to focus on strategic oversight and decision making. RP number four. RP number four aims to increase program efficiency by developing alternative methods for waste disposal. By creating a state-backed portal, there is a possibility for the state to create desirable products that can be integrated back into the agricultural community. RP opportunities include Supporting dedicated infrastructure for the collection of excess solids waste by the state, composting it for use by members of other water boards programs. Developing an online interface for members of CAF, ILRP, and other relevant programs to assist in facilitating waste transfer processes on an opt-in basis. Or providing incentives for CAF enrollees with established bioreactor facilities who offer fertilizer to dischargers under other water boards orders, or who process manure from dischargers without digesting facilities. These opportunities expand upon existing programs, such as CDFA's Alternative Manure Management Program, CDFA's Dairy Digester Research and Development Program, 
and CDFA's Dairy Plus program. Now we'd like to move into the RPs in the effectiveness category. We were able to develop two RPs under this category. RP number five is to develop incentives for dischargers that help the program achieve objectives. And RP number six is to distribute performance reports to dischargers to create feedback loops. The aim of RP number five is to increase program effectiveness by providing incentives to exemplary dischargers. There are some examples of this already, such as the reduction in regional water board fees for facilities that are certified under a state board approved quality assurance program or regional board approved county regulatory program. This RP hopes to expand upon those types of programs and make them more readily available. Proposal opportunities include offering incentives to dischargers achieving program objectives to promote sustainable practices beneficial for human health and the environment, Enhancing incentives that reduce sampling or inspection requirements for dischargers who meet or exceed specific monitoring criteria. And introducing a market-based incentive by providing a certification or seal on the products of dischargers who meet environmental regulation standards. RP number six aims to increase program effectiveness by distributing performance reports to dischargers. This creates a feedback loop for dischargers to measure their own progress and provides them with some accountability. Proposal opportunities for this RP include implementing a mailing system where dischargers receive letters ranking them against dischargers of similar size or output based on key performance indicators, and introducing public interactive webinars where regulators share insights on discharger performance, compliance, and environmental impact. Now we'll be moving into our final category of equity. We were able to identify four RPs for the equity category. RP number seven is to implement tiered monitoring requirements across all regional water boards to reduce workload for small scale, socially disadvantaged dischargers. RP number eight is to use alternative sources to assist with annual fees and third party monitoring fees for small scale socially disadvantaged dischargers. RP number nine is to support small scale socially disadvantaged dischargers with enrollment and monitoring and reporting. And RP number 10 is to encourage use of dairy digesters for dairy facilities located in disadvantaged communities. RP number seven aims to address equity by expanding tiered monitoring requirements statewide, lowering the administrative workload for small scale socially disadvantaged dischargers. This RP attempts to address that monitoring and recording requirements are mostly the same between all cap dischargers, which can affect smaller dischargers disproportionately. Proposal opportunities for this RP include developing a survey or questionnaire for dischargers to better understand their current facility characteristics and potential impacts on water quality, defining categorical differences between the various sizes of dischargers to include conditional exemptions for smaller operations, and to extend existing permitting tier models across all regional water boards. RP number eight, aims to address equity by finding alternative sources to assist with paying annual fees and third-party monitoring fees for small-scale socially disadvantaged dischargers. This RP attempts to address that fees may be unfairly weighted against those with a smaller operating budget. RP opportunities would include focus on grant funding to support small-scale socially disadvantaged dischargers for implementing special projects that benefit water quality and the environment, and evaluating feasibility of an alternative fee structure that considers a reduced impact on small-scale socially disadvantaged dischargers. RP number nine aims to address equity by providing additional resources to dischargers for assistance in enrollment, monitoring, and reporting. 
This RP attempts to address that small scale, socially disadvantaged dischargers may not have access to or know about resources that can assist with the regulatory compliance process. Proposal opportunities for this RP include using established networks like the USDA Socially Disadvantaged Groups Grant Program and the USDA Farm Service Agency to conduct outreach efforts from channels that already exist to communicate with this community. Enhancing outreach by collaborating with entities already engaged with dischargers, such as third-party monitoring groups, local resource conservation districts, and UC Cooperative Extension Advisors. And establishing collaborative initiatives with entities such as the UC Cooperative Extension to expand accessibility of educational and guidance material to multiple languages. And our final RP aims to address equity by encouraging the construction and use of dairy digesters in disadvantaged communities. One major concern for disadvantaged communities located in and among major cap operations is that water and air quality are degraded by these operations. This RP helps, uh, attempts to help address that challenge. Proposal opportunities include collaborating with CDFA's Dairy Digester Research and Development Program to encourage funding of installation of dairy digesters in disadvantaged communities, establishing accessible dairy digester facilities within disadvantaged communities open for use by the public, and enhancing environmental monitoring for dairies with digester facilities. Now that we've reviewed each of the regulatory pathways and their opportunities, as mentioned in the beginning of the workshop, please consider the following questions. First, what are potential implementation benefits or opportunities? What are potential implementation challenges? Which regulatory pathway within each focus area is most important to you? And finally, are there any unaddressed needs? We describe how you can provide feedback on these questions in the next slide. You have now reached the end of the workshop. We encourage you to provide written input and questions on the regulatory pathways discussed and the regulatory alignment concept paper by emailing the Crow team at regulatoryalignmentstudy at crow.com. All written feedback must be submitted by July 31st, 2024. We encourage you to participate in the live workshop sessions occurring in June and July, 2024. You can register for upcoming workshop sessions through the links on the study website. Videos for each program workshops will be available on the study website at cdfa.ca.gov slash regulatory alignment. Thank you so much for your time.